We had a question about our practice, chapter 10 practice question, practice problem, and why, I, how the results differed between all of the different regression runs that I did. And I was mentioning that I had had you run two regressions here, one that has L, L squared and L cubed as independent variables, and then one that has just L squared and L cubed and omits the L variable. And I was saying that the reason I did that is because the book tends to like not including the L variable in there. So if you look on page 369 and table 10.1, there's a summary. They give you the total product function there, which is my Q function as a function of L. And they just, they call it Q, and then it's only in terms of L cubed and L squared. And they have all these weird shortcuts with capital A's and little A's and crazy things there. So it seemed like the book tended to like have, to have this focus on not including an L term, but it's a cubic function, so I throw it in there if it's, if it's useful. So as I look through the regressions that I ran, and let me uh, zoom in a little bit just so everyone can see. Incidentally, here's my, my uh, plot of the data. So hopefully if you, well, I guess it's already there in the, Workbook, you can always go in and just kind of cut and paste the L and the Q columns and try to recreate what I've done. So here I've got these four different regressions and I kind of, there's a lot of other things that are in the regression, but I sort of cut out the things that I thought were interesting. And you can see that the R squares are all one because the, if you did a, a linear trend line, it would not, the R square would not be one because the straight line does not fit this data, but a cubic function does. The quadratic function doesn't either, but a cubic function does. So all of these are basically cubic functions. I mean, they've all got at least L squared and L cubed terms in them. The two sets of results on the left-hand side, you'll notice that, well, first of all, Mike asked the question, it looks like all the regression coefficients are the same. And they pretty much are as far as the L squared and the L cubed variables are concerned, because L squared always ended up having 600, and then L cubed always had negative two. What I did on the, well, let me do it this way. What I did on the top two, regression results was to include an L variable. So you can see, you know, I get some coefficient that got spit out of the regression. And you can see that it gives it a value in 1.7 to the negative 10th uh, exponent. They're very, very small. I mean, if, if you were to write this out again, it would be a very, very small number in front of L. So it's pretty close to zero. Even though the p-value shows it's significant, it's significant, but again, it's, it's pretty much zero, so it's gonna be some number that's extremely close to zero times L, so essentially that L term would, would pretty much fall out. And over here on the, the other regression results, I get another value that's still very, very small, very close to zero, actually smaller than this one. And it's even insignificant. And again, if a variable is insignificant, that means that we can't say with confidence whether the effect is actually non-zero. So it, there's a, a very large chance that this L coefficient should be zero, or the effect of L on this data is actually zero. So I'm kind of getting in both of these results up here that even when I include L as one of the independent variables, that its effect is essentially zero. I mean, it's significant here, but the coefficient is really tiny, and this one's really tiny too. So you have this almost zero coefficient multiplied by L is gonna make the L term pretty much drop out. And then here on the bottom, I actually just, I didn't include L as a dependent variable, and so actually what it would do, when, when you get the, if you did that and you got the results, it would just show it like this, where you'd have the intercept and then L squared and L cubed terms, so it wouldn't actually show L, the L term. But I threw it in there just to kind of, I threw it in just to kind of, so you could sort of look across all these tables and have sort of the same layout and be able to see kind of what was going on. I, I figured if I didn't, if I got rid of that row and you just saw the intercept L squared, L cubed, it might be a little, you wouldn't exactly know what I did. So if I have the L, if I just put L here and show that there's no data here, hopefully that kind of clues you in that I ran a regression without actually including the L variable as an independent. Included an L on the top results, excluded L in the bottom results. What I did on the left-hand side versus the right-hand side results, you can see, I'll start on the right-hand side first. You can see that I, the intercept ends up being zero and actually there, it probably, had this you know, not available error message up here too. I just probably deleted it in that first line. I forgot to delete it in the second line. But set it up to do your regression. You were used to hitting this labels box, but I, there's this other box here that says the constant is zero. When I did a video about running regressions a couple weeks ago, I was talking about this little screen here, and I said there's this 
this option that you can check to force the constant or the intercept to be zero. I wish they would have said intercept so that when you look at your, when they do the regression results, it says intercept, it doesn't say constant. But checking this box is gonna kind of force the intercept to be zero. So what regressions try to do is they take these dots and they try to fit a line that's going to sit nicely on top of that data. And so again, maybe with the data like this, they might try to fit a line that looks sort of like this. It's trying to fit this line to the data. You know, some lines are better than others. So if I had a line like this, then well, that's not very good. And again, maybe if I was just doing a straight line, maybe something like that would be okay, or maybe a little bit better. But when I run the regression, and if I select that box about setting the intercept to zero, then it's gonna force this line to go right through the origin. And the only other option it has then is to change the slope of the line. So maybe it puts it down here, and well, that doesn't seem to fit the data very well. Maybe it puts it up here. That doesn't fit the data very well. So it's, it's gonna be forced to have the regression or the equation of the line go through the intercept. And again, the only other thing that it has to play with is, well, what slope best fits the data? And maybe something like that. And you might go, well, why would you want to do that? Because since this is a production function, and I was, um, I can't remember who I was emailing today about trying to interpret, well, I think the question in one of your assignments was to look at the, look at your data, look at a scatter plot and figure out what the best line is. And I said, you want to just, you not only want to look at the results in terms of R squares and coefficients and p-values and stuff, but you want to use theory too. You want your, you want to have some theoretical idea of what you're looking at. So I'm looking at a production function now. And my theory tells me that, well, if I don't have any labor input, if no one's working for me, then I wouldn't expect there to be any output. When my L is zero, I would assume that my quantity has to be zero. My output has to be zero. So I already, already going in, I have this, this theoretical presumption that my intercept should be zero, that when L is zero, then the predicted amount of output that's gonna come from this should also be zero. And so what I did on, again, these, these right two set of results was to force that assumption by checking that little box that said the constant is zero. And so again, you can see it, as it gives me these results, it just sort of put, puts a zero in there to recognize that that's what I did. On the left-hand side, I didn't check that box. So Excel sort of has more freedom to play with the line, not just the slope of the line, but to play with the, the intercept of that line also. And it put it, you know, at a spot that's essentially really close to zero anyway. Again, these numbers are, are really small. It's significant, but it's pretty small. This one is really small and insignificant, so it's essentially zero anyway. Again, as I see these, I might come to a couple conclusions about which of these regressions might be the best. First of all, again, I kind of like the idea that I just said that since this is a production function, I would, I sort of have this theoretical idea that the intercept should be zero. So I, I kind of like the option of, of forcing the intercept to be zero because that coincides with my, my theoretical prior going in. So I sort of have a little bit more preference for these two sets of results over here instead of allowing the intercept to be non-zero. And again, aside from that, well, the R squares are, the R squares themselves are, are really good. Actually, this line is, is fitted exactly by the, by the data. If you just, if you just uh, create another column like estimated Q and you set it equal to um, 600 times L squared minus two times L cubed, you would get exactly these same numbers here. You know, if you had your L column and then you set up that little equation, you would get exactly these Q values. There wouldn't be any, any variation in it at all. If you included a formula with the L variable in there and included this little coefficient on it, it might mess it up a little bit. You might get numbers that are a little different. Like one of these zeros might be a one way on the end, or it might be, all the numbers might be like 9999, close to what it's supposed to be. So I would probably, again, if I had to pick, then I would say, well, it seems like this last set of results here all, again, all the coefficients are essentially the same for the variables that, that tend to matter. The, I like the fact that the intercepts are forced to zero, and since the L terms is insignificant here anyway, and again, it's, the equation itself is perfectly explained with just the L squared and L cubed term, then I might kind of prefer this one the most. And as you see down here, this is sort of what I, these are the equations that I kind of got out of it, so I didn't have an L, an L term in here. I generated these columns, the average product and the marginal product columns, based off of this set of results here.